As we approach the uh, last month or so of the year, big questions are being asked about the US dollar. Let's catch up now from a technical point of view with Ron William from RW Advisory, who's been looking at this. And in fact, you produced a whole pack of charts talking about the dollar. And I know in just a minute, we'll take a look at the intraday charts to get a better idea as to some of the precise technical analysis. But I'm interested to find out more about your thesis around where we are with the dollar as we head into the back of this year. What's the message that you're, you're promoting at the moment? And that basically the dollar's trend is looking like it's exhausted and may actually reverse in the short to medium term. It's been difficult to call for a, for a while because we've had some false signals into the 200-day moving average, which is our first chart. Uh, but it is still important to, to at least be aware of the change on the dollar. Well, let's take a look at this first chart and you can get a better idea here as to where we are. This is a relatively short-term chart, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so I mean, the first thing to point out is that we've had this bearish uh, distribution pattern, what I call a three strike bearish pattern, because we've had those three candlestick reversal uh, checkmate kind of uh, signals. Uh, that uh, created a big selling climax. You can see the lower indicator there, just showing us what we already see. The red bars are showing the consecutive number of daily uh, 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 selling pressure, so sellers overcoming buyers. And that was, that's what led to the uh, original breakthrough, uh, the 200 day moving average that uh, failed thereafter and it was a, a short position that I had which got stopped out in profit uh, so I was wrong on on the extent of the trade but but still okay on 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 the uh, PL side um, and ended up giving a, a, a big powerful reversal signal back up now the big make or break level uh, then and now is 9840 and I, I already published this uh, a while ago um, we're now reversing from that level going back into the 200-day moving average. So still one to, to look at with caution, but if we do sustainably break below the 200-day moving average, I would say on a weekly basis to give us the real confirmation, then we really need to be uh, adapting to a new change trade and possibly a pain trade that maybe the crowd is not positioned for on the dollar. Just keeping this chart up for the moment and uh, away from the potential to move below that 200-day moving average, I just want to pick up on that bottom chart that you've got there, the buying selling climax. This is new to me. Explain more about this. Where's it come from? What's the background to it? Yes, yeah, so it's something I've, I, I developed uh, in, in recent uh, years. And so this is your own personal um, indicator? Yes, it is. It, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it's measuring the things that we already see in terms of impulsive moves up or down, uh, but this is something I programmed on the platform just to actually show me in very clear uh, statistical bars um, whether the market is, is showing any strong impulsive moves up or down. Uh, I like to use that just, just as an added confirmation for the, for the uh, price swings, but also the candle pattern uh, moves that I see. Okay, uh, just returning to the chart and the price action, uh, chances of, a, of that break under the 200-day moving average, are you um, expecting that to happen? Expecting it, but cautiously uh, positioned for it, just, just because of the uh, initial experience that we had of, of, of the failure below the average. The follow-up chart, I think, kind of serves the point a little bit more because it shows on a long-term basis the trend has been our friend and there is a line in the sand, which is the 200-day moving average. But the question, and, and some, some technicians, some traders may, may uh, uh, kind of think twice about what I'm about to say here, uh, the <laughs> trend is your friend, yeah. but of course there are times where that trend loses momentum and, and sh shows sign of a reversal. And the dollar is probably a prime candidate here because it's, it's had a loss of momentum for so long. Yes, there are higher highs and higher lows still in place, so we have to stay true to Dow theory. But at the same time, um, let's also be aware that this 200 moving average is starting to slow down and there are signs of reversal here. Um, uh, fundamentally, we have to break uh, a weekly close below the 200 moving average at 97.57. I would also say 97, which is a, a value zone area mm -hmm. on my probability distribution chart, uh, just on the left. Uh, the other thing is, let's also keep in mind that the dollar is made up of uh, currency components. Um, uh, just back on the dollar, the target, if we were to break sustainably below 97, is for a big drop into 95. There's a price vacuum risk in there. So that's what makes this dollar trade such a, a, an important and attractive one, um, uh, if, if it's proven true. Um, and on the weighting side, let's also keep in mind that if we get this correct, uh, then it's a flip side trade for all of the uh, dollar index components 
uh, most notably the euro. OK, well, let's bring up the next chart, because the next one um, breaks it down into uh, some of the component parts against the US dollar. And, I mean, it's incredible, actually, to see the wide variation. There's been this big improvement in the Swedish krona, but uh, a shortfall for the CAD against the US dollar. And you've reminded us as well, as you said, about these weightings, because I think that is important when you look at the way in which uh, these component parts make up uh, that bigger dollar basket. Yes, well, when looking at any basket uh, in terms of currency indices or, or even the stock market, S&P 500 or the Dow, mm -hmm. it really is critical to, to follow that top-down process through. Uh, so in the equity market, you, you start with the index, go into the sectors and stocks. Mm -hmm. the currencies, you're looking at the dollar index, look at the individual currencies. Mm -hmm. And particularly when the, uh, the uh, underlying current, uh, index itself isn't giving clear signals, um, then it's even better to look at the individual components. And that's what's really proven very useful for me here. On a regular basis, I do look at uh, price performance in this fashion and, and in other variations. What it shows, just very simply, um, is the best performing uh, dollar currency in the, within the index has been the Swedish krona. So that's the dollar outperforming the Swedish krona. Um, I think it uh, topped to 11% year to date, but it's now currently 8 and a bit percent. Mm -hmm. And on the lower side, the worst performing uh, dollar currency um, is uh, against uh, 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 Canada. Um, and in between, of course, what, no surprise is that red line there showing the cliff drop. That's the pound, uh, which has had the big reversal um, against the dollar. So that's pound strength against the dollar. In, and in a way, that's been a double whammy, um, dollar weakness and pound strength, which has served uh, the pound dollar uh, f further strength. Um, looking at the right side, what's very interesting is looking at the one month and one week time frame. So before we're looking at the line charts, looking at year to date, so that's the year as, as, as we're about to complete it. Uh, but looking at the one month versus one week, we can see there the green bar showing the one month uh, dollar outperformance, uh, that trend being our friend, but red showing loss of momentum in that friendly trend. Mm. Um, and actually, the best performing uh, dollar uh, currency, dollar Swedish, actually now the, uh, the, the weakest uh, in, in terms of weekly, um, uh, one week performance. So this is a very short term uh, phenomenon that we're now seeing, but certainly one to jump on. Yeah. OK. Um, you mentioned the fact that uh, the euro is the largest component part of uh, the dollar basket. Let's take a look at the euro uh, dollar trade, which is your next one, uh, if we can bring that up. And we can look at uh, what you brought here. Back to price action. Uh, nice and simple to understand here. We've got this nice little uptick uh, for the euro against the US dollar over the last um, got a few, a week or so. Yes, yeah, so as most traders will know, this is the mirror image of the dollar index because it's, it's worth uh, mm -hmm. more than half. Um, of, of the weighting. Uh, and for that reason, we're, we're seeing very similar price action here, uh, except uh, on this chart, uh, I've drawn a regression uh, trend. And you can see there the mean of that two year regression, which you can see there on chart B at the top of the panel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite a big, uh, strong trend, uh, yeah. statistically measured. And that mean is where we've actually bounced off uh, just very recently. We're still waiting for the uh, trading averages, the exponential 8 and 20, to cross over again uh, to give us a, a, a potential buy signal. We need to be aware of uh, potential whipsaw or false signals because it, it, it is flipping from up uh, again, uh, having, having just given a sell signal recently. So we just need to be aware of, of the whipsaw action. But either way, the, the final confirmation will be that uh, main 200-day moving average and uh, it, it, it confluencing with the, with the regression band, and that's at 112. I think if we aim for 111.80 uh, mm -hmm. and 112, that's the key uh, kind of zone uh, that would confirm euro-dollar upside. Yeah. How about um, the Japanese yen? I think it's the next uh, chart that you've got. Uh, you've headed this up uh, multiple price failures at 108.50. Clearly an interesting area to watch out for. Yes, and, and, and maybe this will be, I, I think, a breath of fresh air just to see a clean chart for some uh, traders out mm. there, because Dolian has been anything but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been going sideways, rather volatile. Um, but what's interesting from a, just a, a price setup basis, it is actually uh, respecting, or at least um, uh, not able to get much above these key levels at 108.50, and also the 200 moving average, which is now flatlining um, at around one, 109. Um, the key thing to watch out there, again, is the trading averages 
8 and 20 exponential. For the short-term traders here, um, investors will need to look at the 50 to 200-day uh, simple moving average. Yeah. But if you just look at the active uh, moving averages, when we get a, a, uh, a bearish sell signal on them, which we haven't had actually um, in, the, in the last few months, that would, would give a strong sell signal uh, into the dynamic trend regression line at uh, 107.50 and then 106.70, which is the uh, uh, second level on the probability distribution line. Last thing I'll say is that the momentum indicators are also showing multi-month divergent signals, so that adds further uh, credence on the bearish case. Yeah, OK. Let's bring in a chart to Sterling. Um, this is obviously very important because, as you said at the top here, uh, Brexit. And uh, depending on the outcome of the elections, we could well get a really big steer potentially for sterling either one way or the other. How are you reading this chart at the moment uh, for the expected direction of uh, sterling against the dollar? Yes, yeah, so well, I'm fortunate to say this has worked out well for me uh, since our last interview where, where we were looking for a low and, and then a recovery in the pound. Uh, many people was, were citing kind of the Brexit noise as being the, the main story uh, stealer here in, in terms of you know, technicals versus uh, the, the uncertain uh, politics. Yeah, of course, you, you were with us actually, I think, in September when you called for long sterling, uh, which I think is on the left hand had chart here, pretty much where you were at the bottom there, all the way down just around about the 120 level. Yes, and, 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 and just, to, just to make the clear point, the main positive sentiment there um, was the fact that the pound managed to hold above the 2016 referendum lows. Yeah. I think for anyone, whether you're a technician, trader or an economist, that's generally a positive chart signal. And so although the news was, was very uncertain and very negative, the price fact told us that we d it wasn't as bad <laughs> mm. uh, in price terms as uh, the low that was created uh, uh, post-referendum, which led to a 25% weekly drop. So that was a very emotional footprint mm. in the sand, mm. which we failed to break. Um, and if anything, we powered much higher uh, thereafter and uh, above the 200-day moving average, which is a, a strong enough benchmark signal by all standards. I th think the other point that, that we must uh, keep in mind on a long-term basis, if you look over the last 40 years of history on the pound, um, there is this very strong, resilient eight-year cycle. And that eight-year cycle most recently uh, chimed in in 2016 and is now creating a bottom process, which is, is clearly being confirmed by this uh, impulsive move on the pound. So that, that's the backstory in terms of us holding the 2016 uh, referendum low uh, and, and the positive sentiment behind that. And then, of course, the eight-year cycle bottom uh, adding uh, further credence to, to a, uh, a um, further upside on the pound. Uh, the, the initial target would be uh, certainly above 131 um, and, and higher. We'll look at the, the range breakout as a minimum price objective. Um, and then also let's keep in mind this isn't just pound uh, dollar, so yes, pound strength and dollar weakness, this is also just broad pound strength and that's why chart C there on the insert showing you uh, the, the rising tide of mm -hmm. pound against the rest. Um, and actually the leaders are Euro and the Australian uh, currency in, in green and, and yellow um, and just the red there, that's showing the pound and dollar, so it's, it's actually trading uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the average zone of uh, that basket of currencies. So yeah. Euro and Aussie leading the way. Uh, you indicated earlier on about the fact that uh, the Canadian dollar was one of the underperformers against the, the US currency. Let's take a look at what's happening uh, with the US dollar CAD. And um, it, it can be seen here, I think, this sort of chart. Yeah, so, so another messy uh, kind of currency trade here, or currency trend, I should say, sideways to negative, um, but ag again, respecting this key value level at 133.10. This is one of the single kind of reasons I, I like to really use this probability distribution indicator, just because when the market's noisy and volatile and it's difficult to, to spot the clear price levels, this indicator usually um, shouts at you mm -hmm. and tells you this is actually important. And often it's not the level that hits exactly uh, uh, the, the price um, area. Sometimes it oscillates around. Uh, and so this is something I, I would recommend to traders. Don't just look for the precise price level. Sometimes it's a zone, and sometimes the market oscillates above and uh, below that level, uh, as is the case for the, for the dollar, uh, uh, Canada. So this is showing um, the, the uh, dollar Canada oscillating above, uh, as it did in the spring, 
below, and now it's actually failing um, beneath it at 132.80 uh, and 133.10. That's the, the price zone I would suggest in terms of the 200 moving average and the value zone. Let's move on and take a look at what's happening with the dollar against the Swiss franc. I'm interested in this if for no other reason other than the fact that we've got this parity that so many people talk about uh, when currencies meet one to one. And as you can see here, we've just been trading below what you identify as a psychologically important level, and that one to one for the dollar against the Swiss franc. Yes, yeah, so big round numbers uh, or parity is, is always the, the most psychological of all, of all the numbers out there. Uh, and it is proving so for the Swiss franc um, against the dollar. And we can see there it's a zone. So it, it, it's, it's one parity is, is, is clearly the top side. Uh, but but the, on the lower side, uh, based on the statistical um, indicator, uh, 99. So it's a big number. And you can see that actually that's reflected in the sideways volatile uh, range that we've seen on dollar Swiss. So it's, it's been oscillating within there. And just kind of slicing through the middle is the 200 flat moving average again. So you can see here the 200 moving average is really serving as a make or break level across all the dollar components. Um, and the key thing there is for us to break below 90, or either to, of course, to stay capped under one. If mm -hmm. we break above one, then this thesis uh, gets all weakened. Off. Yeah. yeah, all bets are off, and, and, and dollar Swiss actually probably goes up to uh, one, one, uh, just 101, just below yeah. that. Um, otherwise, uh, a break below 99 uh, would suggest a, a big figure and a half uh, lower on, on dollar Swiss. Yeah, it, it can move. It has it has a big kind of uh, range. Uh, let's, let's quickly move on to uh, dollar sec because um, this was one of the better performers until the last week or so uh, when we've got that pullback in the Swedish krona. Um, how, how are you pitching on this and tra uh, trading this? Yes, so uh, I mean, tr t t definitely to tread, tread uh, c carefully on this one because it has been the best performing dollar currency uh, according to uh, dollar index uh, uh, components. Uh, and of course, the trend remains our friend, and it's, it's always dangerous to trade against the trend. Having said all of that, uh, the trend is your friend until signs of reversal emerge, and this is what we're uh, looking for here based on this top-down approach. Uh, we do need a confirmation on each of the trades and we've had at least a bear signal uh, on the 1st of November looking at the uh, 20 moving average, uh, simple moving average and the 50 day moving average, so the uh, monthly and quarterly average. Uh, that's a first sign of a trend change. Uh, we've also got the selling climax starting to increase. That's just showing the bear candles there on dollar Swedish actually uh, being more meaningful and, and stronger. And of course, this is all within a multi-month distribution top as well. Uh, so we just need to um, uh, have more of the same uh, bearish sentiment. Uh, we need to really hold below 968 and ultimately that 200 day moving average 951 significant for the Swedish krona and all the other do dollar components. Yeah, let's take a longer term chart on this because that 200 day moving average is, has clearly been, as you say, the trend is your friend and, until it isn't basically. <laughs> yes, and it has been uh, our friend for two years uh, yeah. or, or just under two years. So uh, I've seen many charts where you know, you've got beautiful trends and yeah. it's been great to trade. But let's also keep in mind that at the latter stage of that friendly trend is an overcrowded trade. Mm. So by definition, it, it becomes a strong uh, kind of uh, reversal signal uh, once once we get the confirmation. So one way of looking at that, and it's a simple thing that people are, uh, at the trading desk can compute, is look at the spread either visually or statistically between your short to medium term moving average and then your medium to long term moving average. And that's what I've just done here on the lower side. So 20 and 50, the, the difference in the two is the tactical measure, and 50 and 200 day moving average, the difference in the two is the strategic measure. And you can see tactical going down, green to red, strategic still up. So it's really important that we see multi uh, trend, multi cycle uh, analysis on the same screen because sometimes our mind plays tricks with us from on the behavioral standpoint, and it's really important to be able to catch the changes as they happen. Yeah. OK, let's take a look now at uh, three uh, dollar charts. So I want to take a look at uh, sterling, the uh, Swedish krona, and also the Canadian dollar. I want to begin, first of all, uh, with the currency. that You rightly said that uh, this is a Brexit currency. Now, you came in to uh, visit us pretty much when we were at the bottom of this cycle, all the way down here, around about the 120 level. And you were buying this at that time. And I think a lot of people, uh, clients included, were saying, hey, what's this guy doing buying when we were down here? But in fact, it worked out quite a neat little trade. 
Yes, I mean, of course, with any kind of uh, uh, extreme counter-trend uh, trade, it's really important to have risk and money management uh, very, very uh, tight and in place, and that was the case then. Um, but having said that, uh, of course, they can be the best trades because it, it, you're basically betting against the crowd, and if you're right, uh, mm -hmm. it, it tends to be quite a, quite a big move. Um, that was on the basis of the 2016 low holding um, and also this eight-year cycle that I've been uh, watching for some time. And you can see there just... You know, that aside, or in addition to it, we've had the pattern of high highs and higher lows uh, proving uh, true. And the key signal for trading, and certainly what I was using, uh, was the uh, uh, exponential um, 8 and 20 crossing over. The now, two blue wavy lines here, yep. Yes, so the light blue and the dark blue. And essentially, that gave me the long trade initially when we actually spoke uh, last time uh, on the pound. Uh, it, the market then uh, corrected, and it was that second crossover yeah. where I yeah. got back into the trade and, and stayed long ever since. Yeah. And I think here and now, we're in this sideways range. Think of it as a breakout pattern, so not a time to fall asleep at the, at the desk yeah. uh, because it's going sideways, especially with all of this election uh, noise volatility going ahead. Mm. For those event risk traders out there that like to trade during these big Sigma events, it really is, is worth um, keeping this one in mind. So a long trade at 129.39, uh, where would your stop be? So it would be beneath the previous uh, swing low. Uh, would be a, a key area. It depends also on, on, on uh, you know, the, the, the risk uh, side of, of yeah. things. For me, that would be the technical level. But I'd also suggest, you know, for people who may be uh, wanting to uh, cushion, buffer that volatility that we're likely to see, whoever wins, uh, Conservative seeing as more the Brexit party yep. uh, win and, and Labour uh, not. Uh, either way, volatility will, will be guaranteed. Yeah, so it's important to maybe lower down the leverage and, and just have wide stops in place. Yeah, OK. Uh, let's move on to the next one where I want to take a look at what's happening with the Canadian dollar, as you've identified. This is the uh, dollar CAD trade. It's one of the uh, worst performing for the dollar component part of the, the dollar index with the Canadian dollar, the worst performing. Um, and you can see here this, this trend. Again, you've got the, uh, the 8 and 20 exponential moving average, a 200 simple moving average on here, which we've just broken through on a, this daily chart. Yes, so the, so, the, so the trading averages, uh, the, the 8 and 20 exponential, already gave us a, a short-term buy signal, but the real strong confirmation is the fact that we've broken above the 200-day. Yep. The, the, the one caveat I would say is, remember the chart that we looked at before yep. uh, with the probability distribution showed that we often oscillate around this level, and so far we've been failing uh, below the 133.10 yep. uh, level. So that, that was the value zone uh, uh, level on my chart. So I would say 133.10 and the 200-day at uh, 132.70. 132.70. So that, that 30 pip or 40 pip range is, is, is key for us to get past uh, for, for dollar count to prove that it's got further upside. And of course, you've got the old highs there. If that range were to break up, then it, it wouldn't be a big move up. Um, for now, my thesis is, is for dollar CAD down yep. uh, with a potential false breakout um, yep. right here and now. Yeah, OK. Uh, final one uh, with the, the dollar sec, um, because the uh, Swedish krona has been uh, one of the better performers against the US dollar uh, on this daily chart here. Uh, today, we've got a little bit of a break low, uh, 90, uh, what, 960.75. But again, 200-day moving average holding up neatly. Yeah, I would say for this, because it's been the strongest trend year to date in the, in the dollar index component, we really must get a strong evidence of this trend uh, failing. Um, and, and that would be the 200-day line, more, not just because it's, it's a benchmark indicator that so many people look at, uh, but also because it's worked so well uh, for, for almost two years. So we'd really need this to, to not work any or, uh, uh, anymore and for this line of the sand to be washed away with some impulsive bearish signal. So we already have the multi-month bearish distribution pattern. Mm -hmm. That needs to be confirmed. And I, th I think the big confirmation would be a break below 95.21. Uh, also, looking at the MACD on your chart there, you can see it's below the zero line. So that is generally a negative sign. But we need it to really um, uh, push lower. And I would actually say to break below the MACD uh, extreme uh, set in July. Yeah. That shows further uh, bearish uh, momentum. Yep. OK, Ron, we've got to leave it there. But uh, thank you so much indeed for joining us with this look at uh, the dollar basket and breaking it down into those uh, component parts. If you want to catch up with more from Ron and some of those uh, indicators that Ron puts on his charts, those that he puts together, I'm sure he'll uh, entertain any uh, questions he has uh, on and through his uh, website. That's Ron William from RW Advisory.